And we are here with session 46 for our Thursday group for Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, recap for last session. I think you guys started out in Obolaka's tomb, which was the far west side of this floor of the tomb. Uh, made your way east to Moa's tomb. At this point, I think uh, Teresa has been possessed by Obolaka. Yaza has been possessed by the spirit of Moa. Then you guys progressed north uh, through a spinning adamantine fan into a room with three chests and a sarcophagus and a pit. I think we ended last session with uh, Sebastian, Kellick, and Yaza having gotten inside the various chests, turned the keys on the inside, suffered various unpleasantnesses, and that transformed the sarcophagus in the bottom of the pit into uh, transparent crystal revealing a mummified creature inside and that creature is holding a mace. Uh, so I think that brings us up to where we were. Uh, questions, comments, anything I missed? Well, first we stopped the adamantine fan from spinning before we went through it. Well, yes, that's true. I did. I, and I didn't suffer anything unpleasant inside my chest. I mean, you did get zapped with some force. I don't know. It just didn't have any effect. Fair and, enough. So nobody tried to grab that mace? Is that... Uh, uh, I that think Xanthiel was, was going for the mace when we stopped last session. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I paused it. Um, or I stopped it right then just to kind of get us... It is a good stopping place. So yeah, you're all... Free of the chests that were restraining you, uh, Xanthiel's down in the pit next to the crystal sarcophagus, and you can decide what to do next. I guess I grabbed the mace. It's it's inside the sarcophagus. Yep. Yeah, you gotta open the sarcophagus first. I thought it opened last time. Oh, it must. No, it just turned transparent. Apparently. Ha. Huh. Never mind. <laughs> Teresa noted you should maybe open the lid. Um, okay, I kick the lid open. Okay. Uh, so as you do so, the the mummy inside oh. animates. And oh, yeah. with a raspy mummy cry, uh, Dude, I think you, you can guess what the mummy's going to do. It's going to attack you. Oh, um, I thought it was going to talk. There you go. So I'm adding people to the combat turn. And... Y'all can roll initiative. Uh, Teresa, I did not add your zombies to the turn order. They can just go on your turn if that works for you. Fun side note, the combat tracker now shows your hit points. Or at least it does for me. I'm not sure if it does for you. It only shows for tokens I have control over. Oh, interesting. Well, I might play with that later. But I will start the combat. So, Teddy, it is your turn first. I'm not sure if you can really see anything, um, but you probably heard the, the mummy make a noise. Um, yeah, so if I heard that, I'm probably just gonna, I'll do emboldening bonds, 
believe I believe I'll do emboldening bond. I believe that's I believe that's Teresa. Sorry if I forget. Uh, yeah, Teresa, and then um, or the guy above Teresa. Orvex. Yeah, Orvex. And uh, let's see. Um, that'll probably, that'll be my turn. Also, quick question, actually. Have we taken a long rest yet at all, or no? Oh. No. All right. All right, cool. Yeah, that's my turn. Okay. It is Teresa's turn. <laughs> so the um maybe it's worth noting this sorry the pit there is 20 feet deep um so i'm not sure if you can actually shoot down into it without getting to the pit itself <laughs> eldritch blast <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. You do have emboldening bond if you want to add a d4 to something. Okay. Anything uh so then your zombies and berry, anything for them? I think you get it every turn, don't you? For emboldening bond yes yeah so you can take that once per turn cool it is sebastian's turn um how deep did you say the pit was? 20 feet? 20 feet. All right. Well, we're just going to jump down in there. Okay. Oh, Ooh, no. That must be my aura effect, I'm saying. That, that is your aura effect. <laughs> it, okay. It's working. It's cool. <laughs> um, I can't figure yeah. out how to change the color on it, so there's that. <laughs> Boy. Uh, so the 22 from advantage will hit because you're flanking. Yep. And so that's uh, 11 magic damage. Oh, new keyboard. Yes. Okay. Second attack. Um, a 19 will certainly hit. Four, seven. All the ones there, Jesus. Get them out of the way early, guys. And then on this action, that will hit. Loves those minimum damage rolls. That's fantastic. Hey, your minimum's a seven, so that's nice. Yes, um, that is nice. What is Iku going to do? She is going to... One, two, three, four... She'll come over here. Yeah, she'll be here. What has she used so far? Uh, da, 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 da. Ah, no. 
Uh, well, nah, she'll hop down. Why not? She will uh, cure wounds on Xanthiel. For six. Can I? Nope, I can't adjust that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and I think that will be her turn. And it is now the mummy's turn. And it will. I think it's going to attack Sebastian. But of course. So it's going to multi attack. Uh, oh, how does that work? Okay. Um, no, it's not going to multi attack. Uh, the first thing it's going to do is raise its mace with a scream and unleash a, a pulsing wave of energy from it. Uh, and everybody within 30 feet, which is pretty much everyone except Teddy, uh, I need a wisdom saving throw. Okay. More ones. Yay. Mine's only a 19, not a 23. <laughs> <coughs> so I'm not going to worry about Kellic and Yaza right now. Um, oh, I should probably roll for EQ, huh? Although I think... You know, I thought... I have to double check. Da 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 da. No. I guess she's not immune to that. I thought she was immune to that. That's okay. She's not. What did I say? Wisdom save, wisdom save, wisdom save. Wow. I'm rolling ones too. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, Xanthiel and Iku are both frightened, uh, meaning. They have to spend your turn trying to move away from the creature, and you can't willingly move towards it. Uh, well, that's silly, because we're trapped in a pit where we can't move, so... <laughs> it does literally nothing. Sweet. It means you can't attack it. Yeah, uh, it does mean you can't attack it. But... So, well... Okay, cool. Just I mean... Getting... Yeah, for your action, you can only use the dash action or try to escape from an effect that prevents you from moving if you have nowhere you can move. Um... It's not your turn yet, Teddy. Although I'm guessing you just linked that. That's my bad. Yeah. Um, you can use the dodge action at the end of your turn. You can repeat the saving throw. Um, so, okay, that's his action. Uh, his movement. <laughs> this is hilarious. He can't get out of the pit. <laughs> he only has 20 feet of movement. Okay. Oh, boy. That's fantastic design. Um, Xanthiel, it is your turn. Well, I can't do anything, so I guess I'll just do nothing. <laughs> well, you can, you can move five feet further away from it. No, I can't. Where am I going to move five feet to? Oh, you okay. move south one square. Oh, cool. Okay. And then you can take the dodge action, and then you can make another save. Yeah, why not? What the hell? 18 to 31? Wow. Okay. Yeah, you're no That's longer pretty... you're you're no longer frightened, so next turn you can do stuff. Is is proficiency a high wisdom in a paladin aura? Yeah. Um I just I crit failed the first time because apparently I can't roll anything but a one. So well hey, not. that's a, that there you go. Okay. So, uh, so that's your turn, but you are successfully unfearified. Uh, Teddy, it is your turn. <clears throat> you can uh, occupy the same space as Barry. As Barry? Yeah. Which is the Barry is a of... tiny creature. You should be okay. able to. Is uh, so, Teresa? Are you uh, frightened? Or is Teresa frightened? No, she saved. 
It's uh, Iku and Xanth. Well, Iku now is frightened. So, wait, can I run past Teresa? Uh, so let's see, it'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. What's your movement? It's 30. I just, sorry, I, I couldn't remember if I could. Yeah, I can pass her. You could so. dash to get past her, right? Because that'd be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So if you dashed, you could dash into the pit, and that would be your action. So then you'd have a bonus action. Oh, no, I'm not going to. I'll stay here. Uh, I'm gonna cast Sacred Flame on the uh, on the mummy. Okay, a flame like radiance descends on the creature. It must make a Dexterity saving throw. Ah, uh, I don't think that worked. So it takes one d8 radiant damage. Cool. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it takes two no, d eight. It takes two d eight damage. Um, so roll two d eight for me. Oh, why is it doing that? Sorry. I don't know why it. Uh... So that is eight. Let's see. Uh, are you, um, I don't remember, does your, um, domain give you bonus to cantrip damage or to melee attacks? Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't think I get bonus to, I don't think I get a bonus to my cantrip. I think he's a peace cleric, right? Right. Yeah. Do you know what ability that falls under? Or what feature that falls under? Divine domain. Yeah, it's it's a divine domain one. Um You do get potent spell casting. Oh, so you add your wisdom modifier to your cantrips. Okay, so that's plus four. So that's 12 damage total. Where's my... Okay. Cool. So that's okay. action, movement. Do you have a bonus action? No, I'm done. Okay. Teresa's turn. And that, that mummy definitely looked a bit singed after that sacred flame hit it. Well, that will certainly hit. And let's see here. First, uh, are you casting it at first level? Or, I'm sorry, at second level? Ooh. That'll hit. So uh, your three rays, as you fire them, you notice the first one does uh, an exorbitant amount of damage, and as the three rays slam into that mummy, it just kind of gets seared against the wall and is no longer a going concern. You have defeated that mummy, and Iku is unfeared. Uh, the the seared body of that creature falls to the floor and uh the mace it was holding falls next to its 
now charred skeletal hand. So who tried to pick it up in the, in the first place? Uh, Xanthiel knocked open the lid. With intent to go for the mace. So does Xanthiel want to try and pick up the mace? You there, Lyokin? What? Mm -hmm. well, I'm in. Um, yeah, I'll go for this. Why not? Cool. Um, so as you pick it up from the, the corpse, uh, red smoke seeds out of the head of the mace, forming, forming the outline of a monkey with a long tail. Uh, with a roar, the smoky apparition leaps at your face, screaming, Let me in. Do you let the presence in or try to resist it? Oh, what's the worst that can happen? Okay, come on. Okay. Uh, you feel... <laughs> this one this will be fun. Um, you feel the, the spirit of this Sioux monster settle in uh, to your head. Uh, and a voice inside your skull says, who cares what happens to the rest of these idiots? We'll kill that fucking lich and get out of here. And uh, you are now possessed by Wongo, who is chaotic evil. He is uh, violent and deranged. His flaw is that he acts without concern for the well-being of others. Uh, and the power that you get is that you can use an action to unleash a psionic assault on a creature you see within 60 feet. Uh, the target must succeed on a DC wisdom saving throw or be stunned until the end of the next turn. So, now you have that Sue monster shout. Um, and, uh, for what it's worth, Mongo, or M Mongo. Mongo. <laughs> oh, Mongo. Um, Wongo and Moa, uh, cannot stand each other. So, uh, Yaza's spirit and your spirit do not like each other. Rip. And also, this is not a woeful mutual character, so it feels bad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't worry, there's plenty more of these to go around. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Um, so here you all there, are. There might even be opportunity to swap out the leader. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, uh, I guess that's worth noting. If you ever want to try and kick um, your spirit out, uh, you can do that. And it's basically a, a contested charisma check between you and the spirit. Well, it's actually not a contested check. It's a, it's a saving throw that you have to make. Um, the uh and i guess just so you guys know from mechanics uh if you try if you let another god in later on like if you decide i don't like this one i want to try and roll the other one uh i just do a random roll to see which god wins that fight um and if you kick out the god or another god takes its spot uh you cannot be repossessed by the same god. Um, was the mace, like, fancy or anything like that? It was just a regular old metal mace. Oh, it's a mace of terror. Uh, which does... What does it do? The mace of terror is a melee weapon that does... Well, so it's basically, it's a mace, plus... It does other stuff. Let me see if I have it in the compendium here. No, I don't want to make a compendium. I want to open the compendium. 
Mace of Terror. Uh, so it's a magic weapon that has three charges. While holding it, you can use an act and expend one charge to release a wave of terror. Each creature of your choice in a 30-foot radius must succeed on a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of you for one minute. Then it gives a really long description of what frightened means. Um, so then, that, uh, yeah, the thing that happened before. Um, it gets 1d3 chart 1d3 charges at dawn. Uh, as far as the actual weapon, it's a mace. Um, let's see if I can drag one onto your invent. Oh, you have one. There you go. You have a mace of terror. So if your psychic shout isn't enough, you can also raise the mace and be angry and try to scare people. Well, don't know how I'll use the psychic shout. I guess I'll just declare it or something. Yeah, if you just if you want to do it, basically if you want to, the psychic shout stuns. Uh, the mace causes frightened, which depending on what you want to do. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get out of the pit then. I think we've done everything there is to do on this level of the complex. Do we want to take a long rest before going deeper? I would, uh, I think I need it. <laughs> Man, I, use, like, I still have small slots spell, too. But... However, I would prefer. I mean, I'm almost have, out of spell slots. So I have everything, all of the tools in my toolkit at peak efficiency before advancing further. Well, what you guys want to do? I'm down to rest. I'm fabricate some stairs to get out. <laughs> <laughs> or a ramp, I should say. Well, yeah, I, I say we, kind of shit at we we do the tiny hut thing. Uh, just above the 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 secret staircase we uncovered, all the way over here. Oh, what do you fabricate, Xanthiel? Oh, I fabricated a ramp so I could get out easier. What did you what did you fabricate into the ramp? I believe we smashed some stone and shit like that. Before, in our earlier attempts at throwing a coffin lid over the pressure plate things. Okay, cool. I note that because fabricate will not work on the stone of the walls in this tomb. Ah. So that has to be, like, stuff. However you get it is up to you, but... Yeah. I'll but say if that... it's, like, bits of chopped up sarcophagus lid, then it probably yeah. should, because it's still stone. So. Yeah. Just for future reference, if, like, you to, to kind of roleplay, you, you kind of investigate the... the the, you get the sense as you try to start casting the spell on the wall that it doesn't work um, and you're able to redirect it um, and mm -hmm. not completely lose the spell slot but you learn that I mean, no, we're about to long rest anyway so it doesn't yeah. really <laughs> I'm trying to give you an in narrative way of knowing this besides me just yep. telling you um, fair enough yeah So do y'all want to follow Sebastian's plan and Tiny Hut by the stairs? Yep. 
I will recover my rope. <laughs> Sir Rope Bearer. Where is Teresa? I want to look at Tiny Hut. Ten foot radius immobile dome of force. Okay. I guess I'll just. How the hell is my character going? It's like. So there's a on its own. there's a railing. I don't know. So I'll long rest. Kellic and I'll long rest Yaza and then I'll delete them from the scene. Why am I like all gray? I don't know what's going on. Or is that because I only have dark vision and there's no light source? Yes. Although I don't know if That's I like that. Kind of neat. Yeah, but it's going to be... But I, yeah, it's kind of neat, but I'm not sure I like it. I'm going to... Um, let's let's try and play with that. Oh. Okay. Eh, I'm just going to... Okay, there you go. Now you have partial color. How's that? Better. Yeah. It'd be a shame to have the entire thing be in black and white, in my opinion. Yeah. Come on, all right. Uh, I'm just reloading because I don't know what the fuck's happening with my character. <laughs> then uh, go ahead and click long rest. Uh, yeah. I'm assuming if you all want to be in, you'll actually have to put the the hut out in this room, not like in the hallway. If that makes yeah. sense. Oh, who cares? Let's just do this. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm moving tokens for people right now. Fine. Yay. My uh, penalty to max HP is fixed. Oh, that's right. You fought all them whites. Whoa. <laughs> you just teleported around the world. That was fun. I'm actually trying to move you guys through the dungeon instead of just dragging you so I don't mess up all the sight lines. Cool. So you guys uh, take your long rest in the hut. Um, I'm, let's see, does does anybody here not sleep, or do you all actually sleep? I will actually sleep. Wait, aren't you an elf, though? You technically don't sleep. I am a half-elf. I still sleep. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Okay, so I think everybody has to sleep, pretty much. Um, cool, so the zombies are on guard. Okay. Uh, so you all safe and nice and warm in your uh, Leoman's tiny hut. Uh, when you all wake up uh, six, eight hours later, however long, um, Teresa, unfortunately your zombies have been killed or redeaded, and there is just a nine-foot-tall creature that looks like uh, flesh stitched together uh, standing in front of their corpses wearing armor just kind of staring at you guys sounds good is it uh it just just standing there watching us that's it nothing else Well, it's watching the hut. So, I mean, like, basically, no, you, you can surmise. No, it's not inside the hut. You can surmise that this creature came upon the hut 
brutalized the zombies. And we, and, we didn't hear that happen? Um, I guess maybe. I like to think that. Oh, whoops. Double clicked on my character and something like that. Happened. Well, here's what we'll do then. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So I'd like to think we would have still slept in, like, on their partial shifts or something. Let me bring, okay, so yeah, I'll say... Or, or uh, if, you're, if the plan was to have the zombie stand watch, that they would have some way of alerting us. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, in the middle of your rest, there is a clanking sound coming from down the hallway. And huh. a nine-foot-tall patchwork of flesh and armor walks into this space. And the zombies are there. Cool. Wait, so which one is the clanker? Because they all look the same. Really? Yeah, to me. Like, there's four zombies on my screen. Oh, you're having Australian internet. Sweet. There should be two zombies right next to Xanthiel and this large creature. Um, well, it's medium, but... Yeah. <laughs> English and Dungeons and Dragons, they get along. So this creature is just walking steadfastly forward. Um, is anybody going to take a reaction or do anything as it strides forward? Well, I can't see anything, but Xanthiel will cast Shield of Faith on us. Actually, no, she won't cast anything just yet, but she will move out to intercept it. Like, not hostile, but like block its path. Okay, go ahead and move yourself out. I can't. My screen isn't loaded. Okay. I will stand up and pick up my spear and my shield. Okay, Teddy, do you want to do anything? Um, I will... I'm going to hold off for a second. Okay. So you guys have kind of boxed the Tomb Guardian in. Uh, at this point, it kind of slowly glances around. Uh, and it is going to... Let's roll a d3. One, two. Uh... Do you want a long rest, Xanthiel? Uh, oh, there we go. Now it's... It's please. Because I rolled a two, so it's going to hit you. <laughs> a what? Oh, well, it's going to try anyway, yeah. Um, shit, where's my long rest button? There it is. Yay! So it is going to swing left and right at you. With an attitude like that, it's not. <laughs> I think that actually hits off. Yeah. I, th well, I think that. So, yeah. yeah, so it hits. Uh, so that's uh, 17 bludgeoning damage as it hits you. Okay. And then everybody else is going to put a boop, and I'm going to put the Tomb Guardian at last in order. But it is going to keep attacking. Cool. Even though it rolled really high. Uh, let me let me get the zombies out of here. They don't need to be in the two mortar. Oh, I can't drag it below you yet, Teresa. No, you just need to roll initiative. 
There we go. Okay. Um. Where is Iku? She goes first. Okay. Um. Iku's gonna get up and support you, Xanthiel, and give you some healing. She's gonna walk in front of me to do that. Okay. She's not in front of you. She's behind you. Have 11 hit points. Okay. And it is Xanthiel's turn. On my screen, I'm assuming the zombie thing's to my right. Oh, did I delete them off the friggin' map? God damn it. Well, the, you know, the, whatever, the quaker thing. Yeah, the, the big oh, armor no, flesh beast is to your right. Is this like a undead thing or a flesh golem thing? Uh, if you had to guess, it kind of looks like somebody strapped armor onto a flesh golem. It's, it's kind of a patchwork of body parts all put back together and covered right. it's a in Frankenstein armor. monster. Yeah. Shield of Faith myself. Um, where is it? I have a feature that it's insolent. Okay. Uh, a seventeen just bypasses its armor. Um, Fire damage. So the mace itself doesn't hurt the creature, but the fire damage burns it. And so it will yeah. take the four fire damage, but you get the impression that the mace itself, itself had no impact on it. Um, cool. Saying that's action, bonus action. Do you want to move or are you good? Well, I did move next to it. But the game keeps resetting my token back to a couple steps. So the way uh, I. Totally here, let me. Uh, let me. No? That's weird. I'm going to try and put my stream up so you can see what I see, but it's... I don't see my stream, so that's weird. Oh, screen. Here we go. Hopefully that helps. Um, so you can see what I see, at least. Oh. Yeah, that'll do. Just leave it, leave it there. Cool. Uh, end of turn, then? Uh, yep. Okay, uh, Orvex is going to just be, like, very unhappy with this creature. He'll try and shoot it with his hand crossbow. We'll see how this goes. Um, his bolt bounces off its armor and he just kind of muttering scurries around the corner this way to try and get away from this creature that is orvex's turn teddy it is your turn okay, i'm gonna go here i'm gonna cast some bolding bond Oh, oops, images. Cool. And then, uh, all right, let's see here. I'm going to do that for uh, Xanthiel. I'm going to do that for Teresa. And I'll do that for Sebastian. Cool. 
So that's action, movement, bonus act. Um, and then for my bonus action, let's see here. Where is, where is it? Where is it? Um, I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon. Where do you want it to land? Um, just above, like right above Xanthi. Okay. Your Spiricorn winks into existence. Cool. And I think you get an attack with it on the first turn. Uh, the Spearcorn thuds into the armor, but does not uh, seem to have any effect. No. All right, that's my turn. Cool. Sebastian. Sorry. I got a plan. <laughs> Are you going to fabricate the golem? <laughs> no. There's another thing that Forge Clerics are really good at. Apparently, they have like a full suite of arcane fire spells. Oh, there you go. So. Uh, the 27 will hit. That's uh, 10 damage. So you slice through into one chunk of its flesh and s stab into another piece of it for 9. And you're doing the bonus attack? Yep. There it is. And you <laughs> clang it in the head with the butt of your spear, and it kind of goes gong. Uh, don't. Oh, that is your. Oh, that's everything. Cool, Teresa. It is your turn and your zombies. And Barry, all your stuff. <laughs> oh boy okay catapult Choose one object weighing one to five pounds that isn't being worn or carried. It flies in a straight line 90 feet before it hits. I'm guessing a creature. Creature makes a dex saving throw, so we'll have him make a dex save. I don't think that passes. Oh boy. And then we get uh, catapult hits the Oxford strike on a failing stop moving in 3v8 bludgeoning damage. Um, does catapult count as a magic attack? Curious. I'm going to say it. Nah, I don't like that. I'm going to let it do some damage. It's supposed to be immune to all non-magical attacks, but I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to say it, it is resistant and takes, uh, let's see, 17, or I'm going to say catapult imbues some magic force into it, um, to make it a semi-magic attack. Uh, so let's see, 17 divided by 2 would be, I can't do math anymore, Jesus Christ, 8. 8 damage, which is not a number. Uh, 
Uh, the first slam will not hit it. And the second slam. So they both they they both slam into this hulking mass of flesh and metal, but it just doesn't have any impact. Um, and I think that will be probably the end of the turn. There we go. Okay, so the Tomb Guardian. Uh, who did damage last? I think Sebastian did damage last. So the Tomb Guardian is going to try and hit you twice, Sebastian. Okay. One, two. Well, one of those will hit. Cool. Um, oh, I need to look at the DM version. Haha, <laughs> I'm guessing the 23 is what hits. Yes. You know, technically those zombies had flanking. Eh. That is true. Anyway. Um, that is seven bludgeoning damage. But I'll say since the zombies aren't using a magical effect to attack, even if they hit, it wouldn't do anything. So there we go. And that is the Tomb Guardian's turn. Um, Iku is just kind of going to hold her ground because she doesn't have any magical means to attack, so she's just kind of going to be here to top off on healing if necessary at some point in the future. It is Xanthiel's turn. Cool. Um, how badly wounded does this thing look? Um... It doesn't look significantly more disgusting than when you guys started fighting it. Um, so, but it's also hard to tell because it's literally stitched together dead body parts that have been animated. Um, okay. So it's it's like it's Sebastian stabbed it a few times. You burned it a little bit, but it still seems to be trucking along. Oh, oh great, we'll diagonally if I can. So it like cuts across like that way. <laughs> so it still hits the bloody thing, but without hitting any of our stuff. One foot thick? Okay, sure. Yeah, well, well how do I do this? One foot thick works. So uh, I'm just going to say that it... Nope, oh, that's a box. I don't want a box. So you have created a wall of fire here. Yep. Uh, so it it's in the middle of the wall. Uh, it must make a dexterity saving throw. Boy, I'll bet she's really good at those. Nope. <laughs> it's a 28 fire damage. Yeah. Every two that is in it. And that is certainly not something that it has anything against. Um, so I think, let's see, which if you're on a failed save, half as much, a creature takes damage when it enters the wall for the first time. Uh, which side of this wall is doing the fire damage? Uh, what do you mean? I, th I assume that as long as you're like in contact with the wall, then it should burn them, shouldn't it? Yeah, but going forward, which side of the wall? Oh. Just so I know which side of the wall uh, is doing damage. Oh, so from his side I get... Ah. The south side? The, the side face, yeah. So oh. that I can like move around and like not get burned. Yeah, so it's it's facing him and the one zombie to the south. Um, yep. Cool. How long does that last? A minute, and it has concentration. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he's standing in the wall of fire. That did sear him pretty good. Um, he is looking... The, some of that flesh is starting to bubble and stink horribly uh, as it sears. Um, so that was action. Do you have a bonus action or move? Uh... All good. I'll hit the end. Cool. Uh, Orvex, hearing the flames, uh, shouts from kind of around the corner. It's a good thing this place is made out of stone, I suppose. Um, I'll I'll stay by the water if you're playing with fire. Um, and it'll be Teddy's turn. Uh, okay, so first thing I'm going to do is attack with my spear corn. Pew pew. Choop, choop, choop. 
Come on, buddy. Hey! That'll hit. There should be a little damage button right under your attack, I think. Or is it not doing that? I don't know why it's not doing it. Huh. Well, what is it? It's, uh... 2d8 plus force? Oh, okay, there we go. There you go. So... Thank you. 7 damage off of the Spear of Corn. Um, and then I'm going to do a uh, Sacred Flame on. So that's a that's a two D eight plus four. Oh my. If I think he saved it. I think he All saved. Right, well. There's a first time for him to save. Um well, and that's that I guess. Put my head down in shame. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian's turn. <laughs> he <coughs> stab it. Ah, uh, that's eight damage. Stab it again. As soon as I can see how many hit points it has. Okay, cool. Uh, it's not looking... Well, it's looking pretty hot right now, actually. Ah, get it. <laughs> and, uh, ooh, on the money. Uh, between the wall of flame and the... Many, many spear hits. Uh, you manage to kind of pummel this creature until it collapses and is just sizzling in the fire, um, not moving at all. Uh, and you have defeated the Tomb Guardian. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I was really expecting it to be more effective than that. We're probably going to need to revise that particular feature. Um, carry on. Good market testing. Yeah. yeah. I take it the uh, dungeon has not been thoroughly tested before. <laughs> oh, I shall end the wall of fire early then. I would say that um, usually our guests are not quite as prepared as you appear to be, but don't worry, there's plenty of more entertainment. All right. All right. We'll, we'll finish our rest if we need to. Otherwise, I think we're ready to move on. I think he got the benefit for the rest, so I'm just going to count that. Okay. I think y'all took it before the, the creature came. Um, yeah. Just a stick. Yep. Okay, so Xanthiel's running back into Wongo's tomb. Uh, Sebastian is starting to go down the stairs. Um Oh, my token doesn't update on my screen for some reason. Weird. Yeah, mine's being slow to move. It's, yeah, I think it's let, just lagging. Let me let me try one setting because I have one idea. Around about a forty-five second delay for me. I don't know if this is gonna do anything. Whoa! Well, it did something on my end. I'm turning off the Paladin Aura automatic calculations all the time so that it only uh, happens during combat. But that's oh. literally the only thing that I changed um, yeah. from a settings perspective. Like, everything else in here is the same as it was last time besides updating. So, who knows? So, if you have to make a save outside of combat uh, and you're within 10 feet of Sebastian or Yaza, Remember that you get a bonus. Um, yeah. Are you even on the screen anymore, Xanthiel? I have no idea. Xanthiel is over by the grate. Oh, okay. 
I might need you to move them because I can't. <laughs> yeah. Well, as mentioned, I have over a minute delay now, so. Yeah. Weird. Probably somebody's hacking something and it's just fucking everybody up. Okay. Um, so if you're all going down to the next level, let me pop it open and get tokens. Okay. So, uh, what order are you guys going to go down the stairs? I am second. I mean, Yaza's in front to keep the shield pointed away from the rest of us. I'm just, I'm just pretending that uh, Yaza and Kalak aren't here right now. Okay. Oh, uh, I can go first. Yeah, or well, Santil can as well, either one. So that's I mean, fine. Yeah, it does, doesn't matter. I just don't want to be going first all the time. I don't mind going first some of the time. Oh, I, I can go first. Okay. I don't have as many hit points, but I got more AC, I think, barely. You've got what? Oh, yeah, you got better AC. I probably got the best saves out of everybody. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> looking ridiculous. Okay. Paladin saves. So we're going to have Xanthiel, then. Who's second? I'll go, I'll go second to give Xanthiel the benefit of my aura. Then Teresa and Teddy, it sounds like. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. I'm going to start putting tokens on the map. Actually, since you use a spear, is that a reach weapon or is it like a short no, spear? No, sort of it's, it's not yeah, a it's reach like a weapon. Spear. Uh, um, where's Teresa? Yeah, some of you. Okay. And then... Uh, Sorry, I'm just getting everybody in order before I swap the maps. Um, and then I guess Iku will be behind... Whoa, that's a moose. Um, what? Why is there a moose in here? Because I screwed up and I grabbed the moose instead of... I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what happened. It's a tomb of annihilation. Anything can happen. Uh, there's EQ, and I'll get Barry and company down here when we get there. Cool. Hopefully that worked. Um, so you come down this stairwell. Um, as you guys start to get down, you do hear sounds coming from the room that you are about to enter. Um, so there are definitely... So Xanthiel, you can see... There's a weird dwarf wearing a, a green skullish cap over its head. Um, and you can hear other creatures. There's definitely probably half a dozen creatures um, in this room that are not in any way apparently aware of you guys coming down the stairs right now. Interesting. Um, for reasons, I feel like this room should have a light source. For, like I said, reasons. So it's gonna I mean, Xanthiel is walking around with a mace that's fucking glowing. <laughs> like it's no, so but I also, I also just think this room should have a light source because of what's happening in it. And it also, to you, from what you can see, it looks like that creature is working at a bench with a bunch of um, body parts and metal pieces in front of it. Ah, so they probably don't mean us well. Unless anyone volunteers for some impromptu surgery. Um, that's a good one, actually. I guess I'll cast the freaking Shield of Faith on myself again. And uh, as you do that, oh, one of them walks by you carrying a thigh uh and it it sees you and just keeps walking kind of to the yeah. top of a dais over here where there is i think you can just see there is another one of those tomb guardians literally being constructed um oh we don't want that shit and as you come into this room you can see uh a whole bunch of these oh I dwarves reckon, by the way light source around my character um the room's lit so I don't see very much you might just want to watch the stream I have no idea what's going on with your feed man 
Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Because, yeah, I just put a light in. Um, let me just check your token real quick, because it should have vision. Vision. Has vision. Yeah. Hmm. Don't know them. Um, so yeah, this room's about... What is that? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. It's a 60 foot long by uh, 30 foot... 25 foot wide room that appears to be a workshop that these dwarves are working on machinery. A couple of them appear to be building another one of those creatures that you just defeated. Um, and as you guys are slowly entering into the room, none of them are really paying you any heed. Um, shit. Well, I kind of don't want them to keep building more fucking guardians, but... Uh, let's see, there is a door to the south of this room. I mean, the last guardian wasn't really that hazardous. Yeah, sure. Unless you want to just leave these dudes behind us. I mean, surely there are more interesting things to find down here? Yeah, no, I meant more like, you know, whether we should just, you know, kill them off or something. I mean, I don't know whether they're doing this work willingly or they're being compelled to do so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that changes the results, though. <laughs> um, also, as you watch these creatures, um, they're definitely not alive. Yeah. Uh, At all. They are... They constructs themselves. Well, they're they're undead or constructs or something, um, and like I said, they're they're kind of moving around you guys as you uh, as you explore this room. Hmm. Ba right, well. Basically, yeah, it's kind of like I'll, if you I'll walk into an ant hill. I'll hang back, find me near um, Theresa and Teddy to make sure that like if these dudes do fucking switch around and go crazy. <laughs> oh, sorry. I cast thermoturgy on that door. Ah. Uh, it swings open. Uh, you can see, uh, you want to try and take one as a thrall? Egg? Oh. Oh, if I didn't give undead. you, oh, okay. I didn't give you your zombies, did I? Sorry. Let me get your zombies. Yeah, um. Yeah, if these aren't sentient living creatures, then I don't see any reason not to put a stop to what they're doing. Yeah. So it could be potentially dangerous. Alright. Is that where you want to be? <laughs> Why are you guys planning on attacking them or, or moving on? Um, I'm pro I don't know. I'm just erring on the side of caution in that. Oh, yeah, we could move on as well. Yeah, because they're just ignoring us. So there's that. And I'm sure that they're building more of these Tomb Guardians elsewhere in the Tomb too. So. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, are we going to come back through here, or are we just moving on? I'm going. 
Yeah. I'm mostly just hanging back so that if they do turn hostile, <laughs> you're not like surrounded by a whole bunch of zombies. <laughs> right. So there's more stairs leading down and there's a door. Okay. Yeah, um, so as you get to, uh, let's see, sorry, just, um, so the stairwell, well, as you peeked into it, as you kind of went around the corner, um, on this level, there's a, a sconce kind of in the shape of a skull holding a torch that's burning. Um, as you looked down that, sp that spiraling staircase, you could see there were additional unlit torches and a few niches in the wall where there appeared to be bones of of some sort um uh in the hallway that you're walking down now sebastian there is a door at the end of the hallway uh, there is uh -huh. light coming from underneath the door itself and there's nothing at the end of the hallway on the other side uh it looks like a smooth stone wall Is there a secret door? I don't know if there's a secret door. You would have to investigate. Oh, yep, there's a secret door there. <laughs> there is a secret door. Well, Xanthiel moved here too, so now Xanthiel. Yeah. There is a secret door uh, in that eastern hallway. Cool. Alex is going to be upset that there was a secret door and he wasn't one, the one to find it. I know, right? I actually find it funny that Observant seems to be better at spotting that sort of shit than fucking... <laughs> Dungeon, Dungeon Delver. Delver? Yeah, because at least Observant seems to be universal, whereas... Well, the problem is passive perception, to be blunt. Yeah. Like, well, uh... okay. Passive perception of 23 is a little ridiculous. Yeah. It negates almost any trap in any book I've seen designed for 5th edition. Usually 20 is kind of the cap, unless well, it's very I mean, specific. It doesn't negate the trap, it just... It just yeah, You're aware of it. Surprised yeah. by it. Uh, so, which so way do we want to go? Um, I don't know. Well, I can't move my tokens, so... <laughs> Rip. guess we go Sebastian's way first? I don't know. I do love how Australian internet seems like just a crapshoot. Kind of is, yeah. Like, half the time it's fantastic, and everybody else is having problems. <laughs> half the time it's just awful. Um, yep. Yeah, so you've got a door to the west, a door to the east, and a stairwell leading down. Uh, do I hear anything behind the door to the west? Uh, give me a, another perception check. Can I uh, hear anything? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so you hear some faint movements, and uh, Xanthiel, you hear the sound of a, uh, a pen on paper. Huh. Interesting. It sounds like someone in there is writing. Shall I open the door? Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, the door is locked. Yeah. Oh. Well. It's unfortunate. Shall Wait. I knock on the door? <laughs> you can give it a crack, because I've got a key, but it's uh, kind of one use. I knock on the door. And you, you hear from behind the door... <clears throat> Go away. This is the staff facilities. Please continue your tour elsewhere. <laughs> well, oh, that <you're> way. <laughs> uh, this fucking guy then. I'll go, go to the other door. <laughs> so and, polite. Uh, attempt to open it. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, I mean, you can. Um, as you open it, uh, oh, hey, wait a minute. Sorry, I have to read something real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Uh, so in the room beyond, uh, uh, you see uh, a stone font filled with water. And uh, Xanthiel, you see another secret door on the far side of this room. Ooh. Kellogg's going to be so pissed. <laughs> Wait, so is it like just where my um, mouse is, or like? Uh, yeah, yep. Okay. Um, can I? Uh, I don't want to screw with it until we decide to open it. Um, so, Sebastian, as you stare into that pool, it slowly coalesces, and you are looking out through the eyes of what you assume is a person. Uh, slowly lumberingly walking down a hallway much like the hallways you have seen so far in this dungeon um, you see a the only difference is these hallways seem to have a purplish green mold or fungus uh, growing from them uh, and as this creature walks down the hallway, uh, eyes literally pop open from the fungus and watch it and pop back into the, the mats of fungus that are growing in the corners and on the walls of, of this part of what you assume is some other area in this dungeon. So does the fungus itself have eyes or is something with eyes hiding behind the fungus or among the fungus? It, it looks more like eyes coming out of the fungus, not that there is a it looks to be part of the fungus okay well that's interesting hmm. and um i will use thaumaturgy on that door it opens onto what you assume is the the level below of the main i guess atrium or stairwell um this is this is below the the large open stairwell above on the first floor um cool. and you can see uh a little closer now there are you can vaguely make out four large winged multi-armed figures motionless at the very bottom of a, about two floors down. Um, it's kind of at the, the very edge of where the faint light filtering in from the ceiling above. Uh, you can just make out the figures. And then on the far side of this stairwell, there is another bronze plaque where I am pinging right now. Um, yep. That looks kind of like some of the other plaques that have had things written on them throughout the tomb. Let's go read the plaque. Uh, this one says, The ring is a path to another tomb. The dead abhor sunlight. Only a jewel can tame the frog. Bow as the dead god intoned, and into darkness descend. And I'll find those and put them in chat in a moment. Come on. There we go. There, I posted that over into the text. Uh, 
Okay, let's see. Do you want me to bring your your uh, your zombies over, Teresa? Yeah, might as well. It's just a pain to move them. Yep. Uh, I just remembered I never took off the paper mache mask, so I'll go ahead and do that now. <laughs> uh, everyone was wondering if you had just grown accustomed to it. Um, yeah. Maybe just liked it. Teddy, are you following? Right. Are you, Teddy? Are you staying with the group or hanging out back there? No, I'm, I'm coming. Sorry. Okay. Um, maybe it's a good point to take a, a quick break, just a uh, bathroom and stuff, because we're about halfway through the normal amount of time. So, so yeah, a couple minute break, and then I'll pick up. So, okay. one moment. Okay. I am returned. You is returned? Mm-hmm. No, Was that Teresa? No, I'm I'm just saying I'm here. Cool. I just have a fan going on in my background, so it's hard to listen to me, so I'm just typing. At some point I'm gonna figure out how to make noise gates work, but that point is probably not today. And that only helps my end. Do we have our Australian? Nani, I think. Okay. Are you back, Sebastian? I'm here. Cool. Um, so I say that as I take a bite of food because I'm so good at this. Um, okay, this is what? Is this really? No, that's not right. Sorry. Is that food I hear in the background? Yes, I'm eating. Oh, cat. I'm having a... Oh, the cat? Yeah, no. There is a cat in the background. Mm -hmm. Where is... Um, oh, that's because this room doesn't have a description. Fair enough. Um, Teddy. Um, yes. And, and everyone else who has passed along the balcony here... The spot where Teddy is standing, um, there's a, a nine foot wide, nine foot high stone door with three oval holes carved into it at head height. Um, as each of you approach, uh, the heads of zombies basically uh, come out snapping and snarling, but they are unable to progress further. Uh, and you hear the rattling of chains as they kind of thrash about as each of you pass by that doorway. Interesting. Does there, does really there seem to be? Does there seem to be like a handle of some sort, or, or no? Not nothing obvious. No, nope, from this side, it's just a very large, very heavy stone door that has uh, zombies that lash out through it as you pass it. And then there are also uh, pathways up by Xanthiel. There's a pathway to the east, and there's also a hallway to the north near the stairs that descend down from the level above. Um, to continue going even further down, the stairs are kind of the stairs go clockwise. Right. That. Yeah. I see a sarcophagus. How far does your dark vision go? Uh, wow. Probably not that far. 
Oh, yeah, that's because that's because that that room is lit. Sorry, yeah, you can see okay. a sarcophagus in a in a room down the hallway that appears to have a a checkerboard tiled floor, at least from the perspective you have. Um, so as you approach that intersection, Sebastian, um, let me get that. Um, so this intersection is kind of bizarre. It's both sides of this arc up and away from you, um, like like a like a big loop. Um, so yeah, at the four-way intersection, the corridors to the north and the south curve upward and out of sight, but with no rails or steps to allow them to be climbed. There is a corpse of a half-human, half-goat creature in robes, ten feet to the north. It grips a staff tipped with a bronze goat's head. Did that have any significance to my character? Ah, uh, no. Okay. I look up. The ceiling above you is eight feet, as always. So this hallway like curves upward in a way um right it is mildly odd that that body has not slid, like slid down. yeah so does like As I go up the uh, curve, am I having to climb? Sorry, I was on mute. I don't know if you guys heard anything I just said. Um, oh, I didn't hear a lot of silence. I was beginning to wonder if something was up with my audio. Nope. So the floor, uh, what I said was as you walk up the slope, you move perfectly perpendicular to it. Um, okay. Um, and you don't feel yourself falling or forward. It's very disorienting once you realize what's happening. Um, Teresa, you can certainly make a medicine check on the body. Um, so as you look at the body, you can see there's a lot of, uh, axe wounds and arrow, uh, cross, sorry, crossbow bolts, um, sticking out of them. Um, as far as age, mm, the body is starting to decompose, um, so it's been here for a bit, like maybe maybe a week, maybe two, but any more specific than that, you're not sure. So it's mildly fresh, but not super fresh. Can we tell like what direction the shots came from that struck this body? And is it like laying as it fell or did something place it here? Um. So there's arrows on the front and back of the torso. Um, there's no blood trail to or from here. And there's definitely a, a dried brownish black blood stain underneath it where the body fell. And it had this staff thing, right? Yeah, right next to it is lying... Um, it's uh oh sorry yeah and he's got goat legs sorry 
So he's like kind of like a, like a satyr. Um, but it's just he has he has uh, as as you investigate him, he has goat legs from the waist down, uh, and he's human from the waist up. Uh, the staff is a yeah. He had a staff tipped with a bronze goat's head that appears to have kind of fallen from his grasp. Sounds good to me. Cool. Um, so as you take the time, uh, it is a staff of striking. Let me get a copy of that up. Get back here. And a staff of striking. Uh, da, da, da. Wield as a magic quarter staff and grants a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with it. It has ten charges. When you hit with a melee attack using it, you can expend up to three of its charges. For each charge you expend, the target takes an extra 1d6 force damage. It gains 1d6 plus four charges at dawn. If you expend the last charge, roll a d20 on a 1, the staff becomes a non-magical quarter staff. And uh, Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it does require attunement. So there you go. Well, that's neat for anybody that likes to use the staff. I examine the end of the uh... uh so it actually keeps curving you can actually keep walking along this hallway okay so you're gonna carry that Teresa cool so if I keep walking down the hallway does it complete the circle and come back down to where Teddy is uh, yeah so basically eventually as you keep walking you do end up here okay and i'm to be a little metagamey there is something that can happen here i have taken it out um so for all intents and purposes this just seems to be a weird loop hallway that you can walk around well that's kind of neat i guess uh, it leads to, in the rules as written, a complete mirror of the tomb. Um, I don't want to deal with a mirror tomb. So I chose not to use it. Cool. Yep. I'm good with that. Um, let's see. So yeah, the room that you're looking at now, Sebastian, um, this room smells of wine. Uh, on a checkerboard marble floor, a gilded coffin sparkles in sunlight streaming down from the chamber's vaulted ceiling. Uh, the which arches 12 feet overhead. There are four huge stone gargoyle heads uh, at each of the kind of corners of the room. Their mouths agape protruding from the walls. And uh, Yaza, even though she's not here, um, Yaza says that Moa doesn't think that this room matches any of his godly companions. Um, and she shares that info with all of you. Uh, 
Um, what does the honey badger say? Um, the honey badger. You have obo laka, right? <sighs> yeah. Let me look at obo laka. Um. Uh, Obalaka, uh, just she, uh, she says, you know, I wouldn't touch anything. I don't touch it here. Don't touch it anywhere. Just don't touch anything. We just got to keep going down. That's where a Sirak is. We have to go down. So be it. Um, but did you guys search the body or just pick up the staff? Uh, I, well, I mean, I did a medicine check. And I picked up the staff. Sure. Um, I'll say after the medicine check as you investigated, you also found uh, an ink pot that never runs dry um, and a spell book. Oh, another spell book. Uh, I'll post it somewhere, but it has uh, alarm, comprehend languages, detect magic, expeditious retreat, identify illusory script, sleep, and tensors floating disc at level one. At level two, it has Arcane Lock, Cloud of Daggers, Flaming Sphere, and Knock. And at third level, it has Dispel Magic and Fireball. That I is will it. Definitely pick up that spell book. I'll post it somewhere, like I did the others. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I think I picked up two others, or just one from the uh, Wizards? Three. Yeah, three spell books off of the Red Wizards. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, to, to answer your question, I just wanted to make sure we were covered off on anything that could come up with okay. that area. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, and this, so to the the honey badger is uh, very dismissive of this room. Um, I will say the honey badger has been telling you not to touch anything ever anywhere your whole time here it's just kind of this constant anytime you look at something she'll be like i don't do it don't do that nope like it's kind of annoying um to be honest this this spirit is definitely very risk averse uh uh part of teresa agrees with the assessment uh since she is about self-preservation she thinks that it'd be best if she stands back are you um, equipping and attuning to the staff, or were you just rolling it for fun? Yeah, I'm going to equip the staff. Okay. Cool. So if this uh, doesn't correspond to one of the nine trickster gods, then what is it? It's a good question. I come closer and take a look. Uh, so that coffin um, is shut. Are there symbols or writing or anything on it? I am checking right now. It's a gilded coffin, so it's... I love these maps. <laughs> it's gilded, so it's glittering gold. Um, it is not actually stone. Uh Um, there is no obvious symbolism. It seems to use a similar artistic motif as the, the motifs that you saw in, uh, the ruins above in the city of Omu. Um, but there are no particular, it's more of a geometric, uh, set of designs. There are no animal spirits on this. Did we open it? Um, can I roll my passive investigation and see anything more about it? Oh, use my passive investigation, I guess. You can't roll your passive investigation. Well, yeah. Um, it's 15. I don't know if I get anything out of that. Hold on. Oh, how is how you do it? How I don't know how to show it. Sorry, I'm reading something again. Oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, so there does not appear to be... I'm going to go with your passive perception. Um, there doesn't appear to be any lock keeping this thing shut or anything. Really, there's nothing from looking at, at this just sarcophagus. It. Yeah, just it, there doesn't seem to be any anything interesting about it besides the fact that it's covered in at least gold leaf. Cool. I want everyone to get back because I'm going to cast the Amatergy on it to open it. Did it open or? Oh, sorry. I was just waiting for everybody to finish moving. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so when it opens, um, it does open. Um, Teresa, I need you to make... Where are... Are you in the room? Wait, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm standing out here. So you're standing in... Okay, so I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as the lid of that coffin opens. Okay. <laughs> oh. Uh, you take... Did it, that include my aura or not? It was a 2 plus 4. I should four. be. Yeah, I, I mean, I should be. Or a two, it was a 1d20 plus 3 plus 1. So your dex is three plus one, so it should have ah, it should have another is it three or four from you, Sebastian? Four. Four, okay, so it's a total of ten. Uh, which is still uh, not enough. Um, what happens, and you'll be happy we're using average damage, uh, you're gonna take fifty five bludgeoning damage. Jesus. As a stone block falls and seals this room completely from the outside. Uh, do you want to dodge into or out of the room, Teresa? I have to go out of the room. You can either go into the marble floor room or out. So you're going in? Okay. In, yeah. Cool. You have, uh, I think, one hit point. <laughs> yeah. Um, as that happens, uh, you can see a couple things happen at once. All of the uh, gargoyle mouths, you hear a gurgling sound, uh, and wine begins pouring out of the mouths of the gargoyles. Uh, and I'm going to take you guys and put you... Well, you basically, it's this is going to, I'm going to execute this kind of like combat turns. Um, so copious amounts of wine are now pouring into this room. Um, inside the coffin, you can see now that it's open... Uh, it has a satin lining, and there is a wooden plaque in the bottom of the coffin that I don't think any of you can read until you go up and look at it, but it is there. <clears throat> well, I'll go up and read it then. Okay, so it says, Drown Your Sorrows in Common on the wooden plaque. And huh, the, uh... That's just practically unhelpful. <laughs> Um, what does that mean? The water, wine? the wine is going to fill this room at a rate of one foot per round. Uh, and so the, the features that are in the room, just to fully describe them for you. Uh, so there's four pillars. Those are the circular things in the middle. There is the sarcophagus. Uh, and then the gargoyle mouths, which are about three feet wide, fully open. And there is wine pouring out from each of them. Yep. I'm trying to find something. Um, I give Teresa 20 hit points. Cool. I'm going to say that's kind of your round of actions for this round. Um, yeah, that's fair. It's movement and Actually. Yeah. I'm going to try and close oh, this gargoyle's man. mouth. Um. So I think uh, what you find as you try to close it is that between the weight of the stone, the mechanism, and the force of the wine pouring out of it um, and splashing against you, um, 
you just can't close it. You do notice that it, in this mouth, it looks like with some effort, somebody could probably climb into the mouth and into the, the passageway beyond if they so wanted to. Okay, that's neat. Um, you kind of have time to do one more thing. Okay. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, we could actually go through here. So I will take a deep breath and start wiggling my way through the pathway. Uh, make a strength athletics check. Because you are going against a... Uh, so Jeez. You try and the wine just shoves you back. Uh, so you kind of actually sprawl out in the floor kind of back there uh uh yeah the wine's actually not half bad like it's not the best wine you've ever tasted but you know it's it's better than a two buck chuck so if anybody else besides me knows what that means it's better than cheap gas station boots it's like a step beyond like you, you could drink this for dinner um teddy or Teresa, do you want to do anything uh, besides yeah. taste the wine Teresa's gonna be like, uh. Oh. I actually have a very I situational can. thing that could solve this. <laughs> well, let's let everybody else get a turn in and then you can do your thing. Yep, yep, yep. All good. So, as she's like trying to get her bearings, do I see Sebastian trying to climb into the wine? Yeah, you see him kind of start fitting in and then just get splooshed right back out. But he, now, like, I know you can. He's not the kind to be a slosh, but I guess the paladin is on to something. Um, so I guess I will try to get in here too. Yeah, give me a strength athletics check. <laughs> can I use my ring of swimming? <laughs> oh, yeah, you could totally use your ring of swimming. You have a swim. Okay, cool. Um, so you, that's fantastic. Um, so you jump in, uh, and are able to. Let me. I'm gonna move you and point some things out, um, just to to facilitate this. So as you swim up this wine, um, the first thing you pass is a cistern that it's flowing out of. Um, and then, do you want to go in the cistern or do you want to keep following the the path that's in front of you? I'm gonna keep going. Okay, and then uh, you kind of come out to here. It's probably gonna look weird, but it's a, a very small tunnel, about three feet wide. But you could definitely see that there is. You're out of the wine. You've like this tunnel slopes up, um, and there is a room beyond. Okay. All right. So uh, let's pretend that Barry is following me by flying, and I'm gonna send. Barry out to cool. indicate there's something up here. I'll say Barry is here. I'm going to say that the zombies in Iku are not. That's fine. But the zombies will drown. Well, they're they're outside. <laughs> oh, right. They're on the other side of that big block <laughs> that seems to be sealing this room shut. Um, so you funny, send Barry... Funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you send a, a wine-soaked berry flying back out of the, the gargoyle mouth. Yeah. Okay. Um. Does he do anything besides? Oh, I say that's probably all he can do in one turn between all of that. Yeah. Uh, Teddy, do you want to do anything? Um. I mean, I guess. So, do, do, does um. Uh, does Barry say anything, or is he just silent? Well, so you see the the familiar kind of shoot back out. I'm I'm running this in kind of quasi turn order, um, okay. just because there's you get twelve rounds until this room is full of wine. Um, so we're okay. we're in round one right now, and you just saw Teresa disappear like a fish into the wine, and then Barry shoot back out of the wine, and that's kind of what you know right now. Also, I don't think Barry can talk, can he? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. They can meow. Yeah. Meow. Meow. I mean, I guess uh, after seeing that, 
I'm gonna try and go into the. I'm gonna try and follow. You follow Teresa. Yeah. So I think you can dash over there and and make an attempt. Um, give me a strength athletics check. I must. Do you have a swim yeah, speed somehow? Man, Sarath would be so fucking happy with this one. <laughs> yeah. Just turn into a fucking squid or something. Ah, uh, so mm -hmm. you, oh! you try to wedge oh, yourself into that tunnel, and the force of the wine just shoves you back in a delicious and mildly inebriating splash. Uh, okay, so uh, back to Xanthiel. Um, I've got a few things. One, I have the spell Destroy Water. Would that work on wine? I mean, can you link it? I'm just curious. Uh, My gut reaction is no, but I want to read the spell. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, create or destroy water. A drop of water or a few grain... Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think because it's specifically... But then said, again, it's such a huge room, it probably wouldn't matter that much, unless I um, really upcast it. Uh, upcasting at higher levels? I mean, like, okay, so first off, I would just say your character knows, like, there is too much liquid for this to be useful. Um, yep. Also, I don't think... Dis I think it because it says water specifically, I'm going to say it yeah, is actually water. Um, in a situation where there wasn't so much volume, you could, in theory, like, destroy the water in the wine but that's not really going to help you here yeah the other theory is i can animate those um what is it statues that it's pouring out of or something uh What's gargoyle like mouth? mouths yeah they're they're big yeah. they're they're giant just, gargoyle mouths i could animate them shut <laughs> and like you know, then the water couldn't, or wine couldn't really pour out of it if the thing is sealed, right? Like, I guess I can do it to up to 10 objects. Still stuck in the room. Yeah, but that's also that's true. Well, block. that's why it's like a temporary fix. And also, well, no, because I could also just animate that stone block. It's not bigger than huge, so I could also animate that. Yeah, but uh, that's gonna. How many just make can it... you animate at one time? 10. Which, which spell is this? Animate objects. I'm just trying to read it. There you go. She said it's 10 magic Depending on its price, it eats up. Um, okay. So I could just tell that giant stone block to get up and move. But I wouldn't be able to do the gargoyles then because that'd be. I'm, I'm assuming that's a huge, and therefore I'd only have two points left. Mm. So yeah, you'd have to pick if you want to try and animate the block or if you want to try and animate the the gargoyles. I think. Mm. But there's also the part where we kind of need to swim through the fucking things to, well, get to where Theresa is. So, so say this how is many, a. Go ahead. I was gonna say how many time, how much time do we have until it fills up fully? Uh, there's about a foot of the water, or a foot of wine in the room right now, and the room is about twelve feet tall. Okay, so we got we got a bit of time. Um. Let's spot, spot, spot. So, saving through. That could help, maybe. How long does it last? One minute. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> I shall cast Bless on how many of us are in this room? Three? Three. Yep. And then I will try to push through the water as well. It's like a strength athletics or something, is it? <laughs> what's yep. uh what's the point what's your what are you trying to accomplish with bless um increase our saving throw isn't it oh wait no that's saving throw yeah disregard yeah. fuck uh don't have that ready it's not gonna help oh, i can't do much else besides try to push through it so you want to try but i figure we've got time for that later if uh 
this fails. So are you trying to climb up the same spout that Sebastian went in? Yep. Why not? Uh, yeah, make a strength athletics check. What, strength or, ju- or athletics? What do you mean? Strength athletics. Because that's... Oh, like the skill. Yeah. Shit. Um, so you're pretty powerful, but the sheer size of your uh, equine body catches <laughs> so much of the wine that it just shoves you back yeah. into the room. On account of her being a fucking horse. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I think that takes us to what we did Sebastian second last time. Yep. I'm going to dash over to the uh, one that Teresa went through. Okay. And try to go up it. And that's uh, well, not the right skill. No, right. that's not the right skill. That'll that's work. The right skill. There you go. You managed to... Um, so you dash. So how much total movement do you get? I'll say you get... What? What's your movement speed? 30. 30. So I'll say you get... What, what is that? That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I'll say you have 15 feet of movement through the water or through the wine because I'm going to say it's difficult terrain for you. Sure. Um, so you manage to, to wedging yourself in your armor against the, the walls, against this water. You're able to um, see Teresa standing... You're able to see her feet kind of standing right above where the wine ends, and you can see the cistern to the side of you. Um, and that is about, I think, as far as you're going to make it on this turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that makes it Teresa's turn. Um, now that she sees at least one person coming up, She's going to tell them that there is a room on the other side of the slope. Uh, but looks like it's only one person at a time going through it. So I'm going to move up, but not come out. Okay, I'll move you up. Okay. There you go. You're kind of standing um, just to describe this room to you quickly. Uh, the air in this room reeks of sulfur and brimstone. Uh, on the floor of the chamber, you can just make out, and you're making this out in part based on your knowledge of of the arcane, there is a uh, pentagram traced in salt. Uh, and in the dim light, you can see what you think is an ornate sarcophagus. Uh, and there are some pillars at each point you think the pillars are at the points of the pentagram. Um, Interesting. And I'll say there's a summoning circle in this room. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to do anything else up here? Um, I will recall Barry. So Barry is just on my shoulder. So Um, Barry kind of comes wet and drenched in wine. Uh, uh, Xanthiel and Teddy, you see Barry kind of meowing, fly back into that gargoyle's mouth and struggle up into the wine. <laughs> Actually, let's get a let's get a let's get a strength athletics check from Barry, just to be fair. <laughs> uh, okay. She's like minus four. <laughs> Ooh. So so Barry Barry tries but fails, just kind of like sputtering and hissing at the wine and then kind of just hovers outside of it, uh, making that dejected cat mule um, as it kinda just couldn't quite make it on that attempt up. Um, I have a plan. So I think, uh, anything else, Teresa? That's it. Okay, I think we're at Teddy, and then that'll be the end of the turn. Um, Teddy, as your turn is coming around, the water is about two feet high now, so it's getting harder to move. You you and Xanthiel get the impression that pretty soon this is going to become difficult terrain to move around this room. Um, okay, and, uh... 
just out of curiosity, how um, how tall is the sarcophagus in the middle of the room? Uh, let's say three and a half feet. Three, okay. I'm going to try and go up the tube for the whatever one more time. So I'll make a strength check. Are, are you going athletics. Are you going in that south tube that the other two went yeah. in? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. strength athletics. Come on. Ah. Uh, you, you almost make it, but it you just slip at the last moment and kind of fall splashing back into the, the wine that is getting deeper. Um, uh, Xanthiel, it is your turn. <clears throat> um, I enhance my strength. Ooh. There you go. What does that do? Let's see here. You gain 2d6 temp... Oh, wait. That's not it. Yeah, that, that um, part doesn't matter. <laughs> strength. Only if I do bears. Oh, you have advantage on strength checks. Okay, cool. Yep, and my carrying capacity doubles, so I think I can carry now two tons. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was already at 9,800. <laughs> So um, you pick up oh, Teddy and then... yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna say you wow, can't actually. Wow, There you go. I don't it's think you can. Mean. I don't know if you can carry Teddy through here, but I'll say Teddy can make a check to grab on and hold on to you as I mean, you try to go horse. through. Couldn't couldn't he like yeah, yeah. climb on my back? But it's a tiny tunnel. That's the. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, it's it's, it's more just the the geometry of what's happening. Yeah, you have to hold me. Yeah. What uh, what um, check am I gonna take for that? Um, make a, make an athletics check. Oh boy. All right. Hey. So you there grab, you, you, much to Armorine's chagrin, you manage to <laughs> firmly grasp a hold of Xanthiel as she attempts to <laughs> traverse this. Oh boy. Uh, with, a, with a 16, you make it. Um, cool. Oh, you're... sorry. I, was, I grabbed Barry, too. <laughs> As I was passing by, I grabbed yeah, it. Barry just sinks his claws into you. It, it doesn't do any actual <laughs> damage, but it's fucking annoying. Yeah. Um, so you're able to... What's your movement normally? 40 feet. So you get 20 feet up. So 5, yeah. 10... You're right at the edge. Well, you're, you're right behind Sebastian, actually, because you can't pass him. Um, yep. so y'all are kind of chained in this tunnel, um, but you're all holding steady against the force of the wine. Um, okay. Teddy, behind you, as Teresa's turn starts, you hear some splashing sounds, uh, in the room behind you. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, Teresa, it is your turn. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna... Hmm. I'm gonna cast invisibility on myself. Okay. So, question for you, just as a point of order. Um, I think before the long rest, you had cast Dark Vision at some point. Um, oh, I was using a torch. Okay, so if you've been using a torch, if you cast Invisibility, you can still carry the torch. It's just kind of up to you. Like, yeah. If you cast I'm Invisibility gonna... and carry the torch, the torch is going to float around with you. Just to... Yeah, I figured the torch would have been made a torch. toast because of the wine. Yeah, I, well, I guess I'll say you were able to get this far and it sputtered out, so I'm going to turn your, your torch off, but that does leave you in utter darkness. It's um, fine. Um, I will wait here for the rest. And just staying... Do you still want to cast Invisibility? Um... 
Well, I will. I'll do dark vision on myself then, instead of invisibility. Okay, cool. Let me uh, let me adjust your token right quick. That gives you sixty feet of dark vision. I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. Is that working for you? Yeah, it works. So you can see um, one other thing of note in this room. Um, on the far side of the room, you can see a weird twisted version of yourself that has a square shaped metal crown seemingly molded onto the top of its head and it's just kind of mindlessly stumbling around in the far side of the room interesting someone bungled that up with capturing my likeness um do you want to do anything else uh, I will stay here and wait for the rest of everyone to come inside. Okay. So, I think it is now Sebastian, your, your turn to move. All right. Well, there you go. You can successfully move past the last gush of water coming out of that, or wine coming out of that cistern. Right. Uh, do you want me to move you up behind Teresa? Yeah. Just to. Well, that's close enough, I guess. <laughs> How sure. did I? Um, you have a little bit more movement if you want. So if you want to go into the room beyond, you can. We'll go into the room if I've. Yeah, I'll I'll say that's about the movement that you can get between fighting the cisterns force and uh, all that make sense sure. so that's your movement do you want to take an action or bonus action uh no i'll wait for the others so teddy i think technically it's your turn but are you just going to try and keep holding on to, to uh holding on to xanthio well what, what would happen if i let go what happens well, if you just let go without doing anything else, you would just get pushed back into the room behind you. But what, so what, what would I have to do to let go and then, and then keep moving? Make a strength check? Well, so you can't get past Xanthiel. Um, so I'll kind of say you guys can do this in whatever order you want. I don't really care. Um, it's just you can either keep holding on to Xanthiel or you can, because of the positioning you're in, um like if if you let go of xanthiel you can just brace yourself and make a strength right. check to try and fight the water or you can just keep hanging on to xanthiel am i able to look behind me while also also hanging on like can i just turn my head around to see what that splashing sound was uh you can definitely look back um the water is about three and a half feet deep it'll be about four feet deep by the end of this turn you see some ripples on the surface of the wine in there. Um, but that's it. And also your view is kind of obstructed because you're looking out through just that little opening with water, with wine gushing. So you see some splashing that looks a little weird on the, uh, on the, on the surface of the water, but beyond that, you don't see anything. Oh, yeah, I really want to look at it, but uh Is it worth making those athletics checks on your own? Yeah. It might be though. <laughs> Curiosity kills the cat. Uh I mean worst comes to worst, if we do if I do fail this check, um I'd probably just, you know, move that block. So that the wine drains out and have that block fight whatever's in there. Okay. So it's not a total end game scenario if we <laughs> If I die. How about I. Can I. Uh, 
So, Ray, in order to see whatever's in there, I'd have to go out? Um, to try and see the room in its entirety, you would have to, to go back into the room. I would also hesitate to mention that well, the, about half our party is um, ahead of us. So, whatever it is in there. I'll hold on. I'll hold on. Okay, Xanthiel, what it, do you want to keep progressing oh, up? Shit. Um, yeah. Apparently I'll just roll like shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, you both get spilled back out, um, kind of right here. Uh, <laughs> cool. Do I have my action still or if I lost it? Um... Oh, I'll give you an action. That's fine. Cool. I animate that giant stone block. Um, much like the wall when you were using Fabricate, uh, animate object does not seem to work on that stone. Um, right. If you want to redirect it to the gargoyle mouths, I'll let you do that. Hmm. Yeah. There's only four of those, right? Yep. You can hit all of them. Cool. Get them to... Well, actually, no, I don't want to close the one that's directly behind us, but because we kind of need to go through that at some point. Yeah, so that, that basically cuts the flow of wine down to a quarter of what it was. Um, so at this point we would have 12 minus 4 is 8. So at this point, there's about a quarter of a foot per minute of wine pouring into the room. Um, okay. And I think that's, I'm going to, do you have a bonus action? I'm, I think that's pretty much it for your turn or your set of things yeah. you can do um i will say teresa and sebastian you hear uh, a tumble and splash from down the crawl way that you were in um do either of you two want to do anything in this moment i will continue to wait okay. i'll come inside i'll come over here okay so this is going to be fun because uh, Teddy, whose name I apparently spelled wrong. Uh, Teddy. 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 <laughs> uh, you and uh, Xanthiel, I need to both roll initiative. Do not see a nameplate or a health bar for Xanthiel. Yeah, Nato. That's because I'm just, you know, an awful BM. Uh, let's see here. Where's, where's HP? There we go. Cool. Um, so you guys are in combat. Uh, there is a... Actually, I need to read something real quick. I was swimming in the line. Uh, I have to just read something real quick for myself because reasons. God, what room is this? Sorry, we keep jumping between rooms and they don't necessarily put them in perfect order. Da 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 Okay, so... Um, well, let's just hit the button. Ah, this is going to be fun. Um, Xanthiel and Teddy, a almost water elemental, uh, surges up out of the water, or the wine, but it is tinged red and blends in perfectly with the wine until it breaks the surface uh, and makes to attack. Uh, it is going to try to attack Xanthiel. And at an 11, it will fail. 
uh, and then it used about five feet of movement. It surges back into the water to the northeast and dips below the surface. So you know it went under the wine here. And that's fine. Spirit Guardians doesn't need me to see it. <laughs> it is Xanthiel's turn. Yup. Uh, but that being said, I'm already maintaining a concentration spell to have advantage on strength. So I'm going to try to push through the fucking pipe thing again, I guess. <laughs> see ya, Teddy. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought he was still hanging on, but yeah. Well, you guys got kind of spilled out. Um, yeah, I get that, but... Uh, so I guess the way I'll run that is, Teddy, do you want to try and hang on, or do you want to take a turn? No, I'm not going to hang on. Okay, cool. so make the strength check. Or the strength athletics check. Where is it? I'm sorry for Xanthiel. Oof. Man. Nope. You, you start I'll to make headway, and it doesn't work. Like cool. Um... So, Teddy, you get spilled back out. I'll say that's kind of your movement, but you can take an action. Uh, well, wait a minute. Let me go in turn order. Ha ha. Um, so, who's going to go? Uh, another one is going to surge up and also try to attack you, Xanthiel. Nope. Nope. Yep, that worked well. Uh, this one, I think that used up most of its... Wait, what's that plus attack? Their attack bonus is five. Cool, it's impossible for them to hit me. Unless they crit, maybe. Well, yeah, but besides that. And then uh, we'll go to the last one. What is their swim speed? Come on. Features. Yeah, what does that mean? Oh, that's cool. Um... <laughs> they have no movement speed. That's fantastic. Um, I have to look up a movement speed real quick. Oh, 60 feet. Okay, cool. They have a 60 foot swim speed. So this one will come over and rear up and it will attack Teddy. Does a 14 hit? No. Okay, Teddy. Get out of here. It is your turn. All right. I'm going to try and climb up this hole myself. Okay. Here we go. Uh, that makes it. So you can get... What's your movement? 30. So you can get about... 15 feet up that hole so you can get to here oh i clipped okay. the wall god damn it and uh i think that's 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 pretty much your go i think at that point um unless do you have a uh if you're moving first and doing that then uh yeah i mean do you want to do anything else sorry um so the uh so, uh, where is it? One so transmutation spells do not work, correct? That's what that's what you said. Uh, so Xanthiel has has uh, basically figured, or at least I don't know if you. Well, I don't know. Have you said anything? Well, yeah. I mean, basically, magical effects trying to mess with the walls and stone of this tomb do not appear to work right well i thought that was also in the beginning like in the contract or whatever it's like you can't use these spells anyway uh, um, there's, there's a whole list of spells but yeah um so basically like divination transmutation teleportation are all suspect okay. well then i will end my turn. no actually i'm gonna give hold on where's I'm going to give guidance to you. Oh, shit, I can't. I can't. I have to touch him. Well, sorry, man. That's all good. I'll just drown here, I all guess. Right. I can't roll anything <laughs> higher than I mean, do you want to give him guidance as you move past him? 
Yeah, if, if, if you're cool yeah, that's, with that. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. All right, all right. There you go. You were adjacent to him prior. You get a D4 on Her. ability check, so hopefully that works out. Cool. Uh, so, Sebastian and Teresa, you hear sounds of struggle and splashing and some weird noises uh, down that tunnel. Do you guys want to do anything? I wonder what's taking them so long. <laughs> I'll go see what's going on. Oh, great. So you splash back and see, you can see Teddy. You can't really see past him. To, um, but Teddy's there uh, crawling up. Um I'll, you wanna... I'll just tell her that we're being attacked by wine elementals. <laughs> Where's the horse? You can you can just see uh, that equine form through the mouth of the gargoyle at the end of the tunnel. The silhouette. Sure. Well then, oh, sorry. It's like eleven forty over here. I gotta go to bed. Um, I think I have some rope. Yeah, I do have some rope. So I'll call out because uh, it's fifty feet of rope. It should be good enough. Hey, Sebastian, got a place so you can anchor some rope. Our horse friend needs some help. Uh, sure. And I... So yeah, you can, you can toss the rope to Sebastian on one end and let the other end just kind of get sucked down the, the yeah. crawl way. So, right. Sebastian, you've got the rope. What do you want to do with it? So I want to, uh, like, tie the rope around my waist and then, like, brace against either side of the opening. Speaking of squats and deadlifts... Um, yeah, right? Cool. Okay, so uh, I'll I'll come back to that when it is your turn, Xanthiel. Okay. I'll take silences. Yes. Um, the third weird uh, rears up. Uh, they do actually have reach, so it is going to try and whack you. Um, oh, look at that. It failed. Uh, so just a, a thick, whiny appendage smashes against you, but has no real effect. Uh, Xanthiel, it is your turn. There is a rope dangling now uh, out from the, the mouth of this gargoyle. Cool. I guess I'll grab onto that. Yeah, so I'm going to say that is going to give you advantage. For trying to make a check if you already had advantage. To. Yeah, he already wow. had advantage. I was uh, just rolling really, really badly over and over again. Oh. Uh, Sebastian, roll a d6. Oof. Um, cool. Uh, Xanthiel, are you going to try and pull up? into the room into the the thing or are you going to try and fight the thingers well i'm going to try and if i stay here so i might as well keep cool going up. yeah so make your roll uh you've got guidance and you've got an, a plus one on top of everything else and Seba <laughs> sebastian you feel the tug and being as drenched in wine as you are you kind of slip a little bit uh so you, you help but not as much as you would have hoped Hey, finally. Yeah, hey, that'll work. Uh, with that, uh, you get right up behind Teddy. Because um, Teddy's kind of in the way. Um, so the other... Uh, do you want to do anything else on your turn, Xanthiel? Don't do anything else. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a weird set of rules. Uh, so the... The wine weirds uh, kind of 
pile in um, at the mouth of the gargoyle, but they really can't do much at this point. Um, they're kind of kind of stuck there, just hoping you fall back. Uh, Teddy, it's your turn. You've also got the rope in front of you um, that you can grab onto if you want to use that to try and help get out. Teddy. Owen. No, I cannot hear you. Well, I guess technically the uh, enhance ability is no longer in effect because you animated the objects. Right. Can you hear us, Teddy? Hey, can you hear us at all? Okay. Okay. Have a good night, Teresa. Um, well, I've got you on the phone, so do you've got the rope in front of you. Do you want to try and pull yourself up and out? Yeah. So make your strength athletics check. Huh? Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Yeah, you make it. You pull yourself up. I'm just going to move you up. Um, do you want to do anything else on your turn? Like, keep moving out to get to where... Well, you're kind of... I'm just going to move the three of you. Um, Teddy, do you want to do that? Whoa, okay. Um, so then uh, I think we'll just go... At this point... Xanthia, it'll be your turn. Do you want to try and finish getting out? Yeah. Hey, that'll do it. Um, so you pull yourself up and get into the tunnel. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll just move everyone into the room here. Uh, so everyone is in this room with the pentagram, the sarcophagus, and the creepy Teresa homunculus uh, in the bottom corner. And I think that's probably a good place to pause before starting a whole nother room. So yeah, you have solved cool. the, the floating wine puzzle. Uh, damn. Yeah. Looking about that. Cool. Well, thank you all. Uh, oh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably hang up. Are you gonna go to bed? Yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. Cool. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. You too.